musicians. If you have your Bibles this morning, would you turn please to the Old Testament, the book of Hosea. Prophet Hosea is where the text will be found this morning in the third chapter. The first of the minor prophets, a young man by the name of Hosea, called of God to declare the word of God to the northern kingdom of Israel pleaded with them before their ultimate demise. Imagine preaching the gospel with everything within you, crying out, yet to no avail. The third chapter is what we want to deal with, just a couple of verses. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, this is Hosea speaking, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flavins of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and an omer of barley, and half omer Barley, and I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. And I want to minister just a few moments on this subject. Hosea and Gomer. Hosea and Gomer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege to minister, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We only ask that you would help us. Help us once again, anoint us to minister and anoint the people to hear what I believe that you've given us for this service. And Lord, we give you all of the glory and all the praise. And everyone said, Amen. amen. I want to preface the message this morning by saying this, and I don't typically do this, but I will say it. Uh, this is something the Lord has given me within the last few days, and then this morning he impressed it upon my heart even in a greater way. And I want us to individually, as we all should do, and as I have had to do and will continue to do during this sermon and after, to allow the Lord to search our hearts and make sure, be sure that your faith is in Jesus Christ this morning. And I can, I can tell you this, if we will approach this morning, this message, honestly, I, I'm not here to go after anybody, you're not here to go after me, but as honest Christians, I can assure you that God has something to say to you Amen. individually. Amen. Weeping and praying and literally repenting and sobbing and crying and repenting over and over again, preparing for this sermon. And someone may say, repent for what? Well, if you read the story, you'll find out why. <laughs> Because it's easy to get a sermon and come to church and say, I got something to say to everybody else. But, yeah. my, my. but truth says, I've got to eat this roll myself. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, truth says, I have to be first partaker of what I'm saying to you. And I believe that there is a call, and I'll say this before we even get into it, to the body of Christ, to us in this building, to come back to our first love. I believe there is a call Amen. to return home and to yield to the Lord 
into the inner working of the Holy Spirit and allow him to rid us. Please, I want you to hear me this morning, if you can, and I, I'm not going to fuss. I don't want any talking and walking, please. But I believe there is a call to repentance. But not just a word of repentance, but action of repentance. A life of repentance. A life separated and consecrated to the Lord, surrendering and submitting to his will and allowing him to do something in us. Now, I'm going to be very personal with this, but I don't know about you, but I'm tired of touring. I, I just, I, I see things, and, and I know the Lord deals with me about things, and, and I, I, there are things that are there that, that are deeply embedded, and oftentimes, we try to overlook those things. But his constant love will never allow you to overlook it. His constant love will shine the light in your heart and in your soul. It's not necessarily outward things. A lot of times we look for outward things. But a lot of times there are things deeply embedded in our heart. Unforgiveness. Uncontrollable rage and anger and tempers. And God says, I want to deal with you today. I want to deal with your heart. I want you to... Be honest about yourself. And this is not what we're preaching. We're not preaching a sermon to have a confession time between one another. This is a time that I'm going to be honest with God. This is a time where I've got to be honest with myself and stop lying to myself. And the Lord began to deal with me this morning. And I'm going to get to the message, but allow me to share this. And, and, and he, said, he said, you got to stop blaming people for your sin. He said, he said this to me, a lot of the rebellion that is in the heart of believers is misplaced. Yeah. And I said, what does that mean? And I literally went to look it up and to understand that when you say something is misplaced, that means you're out of position. Yeah. Rebellion means to look at authority. And I'm not talking about me or any preacher in this building when I'm talking about authority. Right. I'm talking about this book. Right. Amen. I'm talking about the rule of God. You can't go to hell for disobeying me, but you can go to hell for disobeying God. Come on, talk to me in here. I know a lot of times we preachers want you to do what we tell you to do, but this is not what's going to send you to hell if you disobey me. What will send you to hell is, because see, I can tell you to do something that's not scriptural, but this book will lead you to Jesus Christ. And he said the rebellion that a lot of times we live out of rage, we live in anger, and we live and we start to engage ourselves in worldly activities, blaming mama and daddy, blaming wife, blaming husband, blaming work, blaming everything else. But the truth of the matter is that deep in the heart of the believer, there was an appeal made to go the wrong direction. And when sin festers and is conceived, it brings forth. I mean, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. Right, right. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Let me tell you something this morning. It's not the appeal that's in this brother that deceived me. It's not the default position that's in him that deceived me. It's not something that's wrong with her that deceived me. It's something in me that sin appealed to. And I can walk around and blame everybody else for my activity. But the reality is, as Paul said, when the commandment came, sin revived. And I died. Oftentimes we're living in anger. We're living in our hurt. And we're making decisions based on our hurt. And our rebellion is actually towards God. It's not towards your spouse, your church, your family, your, your wife, your husband, your co-workers. It's not because you're frustrated. It's because we haven't surrendered fully to God. And we're whoring after. And I know that's a strong statement but we're whoring after other gods. But the call this morning is come home. Come home. Return to your first love. 
Just a few moments this morning, the story that we are reading, as I quote Brother David Wilkerson, the, the late David Wilkerson, I believe that Hosea was a man of another sort. I cannot mentally, I'll be honest with you, I can't mentally fathom it to grasp how hard this had to be. God asks this young man to go marry a woman who had a reputation of being a whore. Yeah. And God says, I want you to go marry her, but I don't want you to just marry her. I want you to love her. And I don't want you to just love her, but I want you and her to produce children. Don't marry a woman who has children already by whoredom. But I want you to marry a woman who is living in this lifestyle of immorality. I want you to marry her and I want you to produce children by her. A known prostitute. And God says, marry her. As we all know how the tongue of gossip is. Can you imagine what everybody in Israel was saying? When Hagar. I mean, when, when, when Hosea marries this woman, woman who had a reputation that preceded her, she was living an immoral life. Yeah. And God said, marry her. I, you know, as I read this, every time I read it, I can't help it. I, it, it blows my mind. It messes me up because I, God was trying to teach an abject lesson to Israel. And in his teaching them of his love for them, he was showing them how wayward they were. And in this story, in this text, two things I want you to see this morning, and I promise you it'll bless you. If you see Christ and his love for us in Hosea, yeah. and if you will see yourself and your unfaithfulness to the Lord, Gomer. But oftentimes we are not honest about ourselves. Yeah. And we look to everyone else and say, well, if it hadn't been for this, yeah. I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't been for this, I wouldn't have done this, or whatever the case may be. I'll be very practical this morning. He, the Lord was dealing with me and showed the, the, a, a lot of times, the reason we're so unfaithful is because we don't have relationship with the Father. We have the relationship established, but there's no fellowship and communion with the Father. Yeah. Right. We stop by. Yeah. Mm. Now, some of y'all didn't get that, but oh, you'll get it in a minute. Oh, we stop by the post hall. Y'all know how we stop by and we, 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 we give something to them so that they can take care of something for us. We stop by the bank. We make deposits. We make withdrawals. And a lot of times we treat God like an ATM machine. We just go by. Come on. Please. I want you to stay with me and hear what I'm saying. A lot of times we treat God like I'm just in relationship with you for what you can do for me. As long as everything is okay, I don't really need you. But as soon as I get in a trap, I'm going to call you. And I'm going to need you to be there when I call you. And if not, I'm going to throw a fit. And I'm going to get mad and ball my fists up. And that's what children do. Young children, we throw fits because we can't get our way. We can't get the things that we think we ought to have. And a lot of times, as believers, we have no communion and fellowship with the Father. Because of that, we've got a relationship with God that's been established through Jesus Christ. Yes. But the discipline part on my part. Because God's not going to make you get out of the bed. Right, right. He's not going to bring a hand down from heaven and grab your hand and make you open the Bible. Come on. He's not going to come physically and remove you from bed, put you in your car, and, and drive you to a church house. That's right. There takes discipline and effort on your part, on my part as a child of God. But I, I, 
I'm, I'm, I just got to share what God has given me and share it with me this morning. So just pray for us. Pray for me. Pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. Is that a deal? Amen. Say, Lord, help us all. Yeah. But so, so often, this is what happens because there's no communion and because there's no fellowship, life consumes us. Activity consumes us. And before I know it, I gotta make time for God. Watch out. Before I know it, I gotta make time to pray. When the reality is, I should make time for everything else. I should make time for everybody else. I shouldn't ever have to make time for the one who died for me, for the one who who gave his life for me. Why? Why should I have to make time for him when he came to this earth? My God, for thirty. Three and a half years with one purpose in mind. And that was me and you. One purpose. Spit in his face. Cursed him for everything he knew. Dogged him for everything. Whipped his back until his body was, was, was open to, my God, wounds that protruded with blood. Head swelling to where they couldn't recognize him. And he said, I gave my back to the sinners. Isaiah said his visage was more than any other man. I didn't do it for me. I did it for you. I gave everything. If you go back to the Old Testament and you read Leviticus and you read where God talked about the whole burnt offering, in essence, it meant God gave all he had to redeem you. He said, everything I got, I'm giving it to you through my son, Jesus Christ. And all you got to do is surrender to him, believe him. And a lot of times we start out well. We start out on fire. But what happens is we get hit along the way. Yeah. When you get hit, you get caught off guard by it. It's the time when you get hit that you reach out for what you're depending on. When the boxer gets hit, he reaches for the rope. When the child gets hurt, he reaches for mom. Yeah. But when believers get hurt, a lot of times we'll reach out for people. And because of your person who you depend on couldn't pick up, they couldn't return the text, they couldn't call you right back. They were at work or they were busy, not because they didn't care, but because they just couldn't get to the phone. Yeah. Amen. You begin to get worse because you're really dependent on somebody else. Yeah. You depend on church and now all of a sudden you can't get to church. Your car broke down. Yeah. And because we are not depending on God when the trouble comes, we start gravitating towards what feels good. Yeah. Because if we're honest, we're people who like pleasure. Yeah. That's right. That's right. If I'm hurting, I just want relief. Yeah. A lot of times we'll go for what brings us happiness. So you know what Israel did? They went after Egypt. They went after all the other nations. They said, we're just going to do whatever we can do. Baal is a God we can see. We're just going to get Baal and erect Baal and altar and we're going to start worshiping there because it's inconvenient to go to Jerusalem. Hear me this morning. It's inconvenient to travel there. So we'll just set it up here in Dan and in Bethel. And God, think about it. For hundreds of years, he dealt with their sin. He was patient. He pleaded with a prophet after prophet. Elijah, Elisha. I mean, look at these great men of God. But yet to no avail. And now we get down to Hosea. And Hosea pictures how filthy Israel really is. <coughs> you come to a place, and I, I, I want to try to clean this up. But to live this lifestyle means that you've come to a place that's very low. Yeah. That Gomer was living. 
to give herself up, her body, to whoever just brought her pleasure was the life that she lived. She did this for years. And God says, I want you to go take that woman. Yeah. <clears throat> and I want you to marry her. Jesus. There's no evidence that Hosea complained. There's no evidence that he questioned God. And then, too, there's no evidence that God explained to him why. Just go marry her. Then they, she gets pregnant and Jezreel is born. Word means to be scattered. He's picturing, I'm going to scatter you and my judgment is going to come. Then a daughter is born who named Lo Ruhama means unpitied. I will have no pity on you. And then lo am I means not my people. This was the final verdict that God had given to Israel through the picture of a woman who was adulterous, who was living a life of a prostitute. And he marries her and they got three children. Marrying her is one thing. Can you imagine what the people said when he had a child out? And then he had another child by her. And then he had another child by the woman. And now, the woman leaves him. He was faithful to her. But she wasn't faithful to him. Yeah. And I know we can think, how ungrateful can a person be to walk away from everything because you just want pleasure. Yeah. She walked away from Hosea and she began to go back to her former lovers. Yeah. And she began again to live the life of adultery. So if the story is bad, it gets worse. Because God says, okay, I want you to go get her. And I want you to restore her. She's now in bondage. She's now a slave. And I want you to go purchase her. Not only do I want you to purchase her, but I want you to forget about everything she's done and love her. I want you to think with me this morning just a little bit. Because by now, I want you to begin to see yourself in Gomer. Yeah. And I, I got to stop here and, and, and talk about this for a moment. The, 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 the connotation here is to spiritual adultery. Yeah. How Jesus died on the cross yeah. to give us everything we need. Amen. Paul said we're married to Christ. Jesus came to the earth and the church is his bride. Yeah. Think about that. We are the bride of Christ. But if we're honest, we've been unfaithful yeah. to a husband. There you go. Mm. We've trusted other things. We've gravitated toward the world to find pleasure. We've gravitated towards people to find pleasure. We've gravitated towards drugs. And if you read the text and keep reading the book of Hosea, God's love is shines brighter and brighter. And he showed them why. They were in this state is because they didn't give heed to God. And you and I this morning, sin has become so awful. You don't have to say amen. You don't have to nod. But I want you to look at me and I want you to hear me this morning. Some of us have become slaves yeah. to sin. Despite our tongues, despite our shout, many in the body of Christ have become slaves to sin. After relationship with God, we have been enslaved again. 
because we've left our husband and we've gone after other things and now the bitter results are starting to come out. You think about your life this morning. You think about your consecration, your steadfastness to God, your, 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 your longing after God. Has it dwindled any? Have you begin to drift away from the Lord. You still talk about him. You still sing about him. You still preach about him. You still do everything that you used to do because we get used to activity. You think about a person who goes to work that does the same thing for 10 years, they're going to get used to that. And what do we do when they come in and change our course? We get kind of frustrated because we don't want change. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it this way for so long, I can't get used to doing it another way. <coughs> And the sad reality is we become enslaved because we've gotten used to bondage to where it doesn't really bother me like it used to. First time it was heartbreaking. But now I've grown comfortable with the world. I've grown comfortable with what the world does, with what the world talks about. I'm not offended by their language. I'm not offended by their music. I'm not offended by their lewdness, by their nudity. I'm not offended by what they do. It doesn't bother me. I can consume it. I can watch it. I can go to it. I can listen to it. I can partake in it. I'm no longer bothered by it because we become enslaved to it. It becomes so bad to where the presence of God is what begins to look foreign. Mm. Somebody turns on an album of somebody that's not living for God, I'm comfortable here. But when people start worshiping and praising God, if somebody challenges you and says, hey, let's have a prayer meeting at work. Let's have a prayer meeting at school, in the gym, after school. You feel uncomfortable with the things that you ought to be comfortable with. Amen. Come on, don't, don't get deep. Let's talk about it this morning. And we start growing comfortable with our activity. We start growing comfortable. Don't think this is easy for me to preach. This is hitting me and it's hurting me. But I've got to preach it because woe is me if I don't preach the truth to you. I've got to tell you what God told me to say. There's too much comfort with sin. It's too much comfortable with comfortability with the music. It's too much comfort with the language. It's too much comfort with who I'm talking to. And you, you don't even examine the people you date anymore. It's just external only. It doesn't even matter who I engage with. It doesn't even matter who calls me, who texts me. It doesn't matter anymore because I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable in Bell's house. Bell looks good. I can see him. Bell makes me feel good. I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable with this. It doesn't bother me. I don't see anything wrong with it. It used to be a time where you would turn the channel. It used to be a time where you would dis dis back away. But now I'm comfortable with it. I, 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 I want it. I, I can't give it up. I feel like my life will be empty without him, without her, without this or without that. When are you going to reach out to God and tell him the truth? I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I'm, I'm, I want to minister to you this morning. I'm not here to bring condemnation. I'm here to be honest with you. You're hurting. I know you're hurting. You're, you're angry. Things have happened to you. People have hurt you. And now you're angry. You're acting out of the anger. You're hurt because life has knocked you around. And, and now all you know is to give yourself to someone or to give your time to someone. That's not the will of God. You're afraid of the presence of God because in the presence of God, a challenge will be made. In the presence of God, God's going to say, I need you to say yes and I'll take this from you. I need you to surrender and I'll see we're afraid of conviction. We're afraid of truth. Come on, man. Truth makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Truth makes me uncomfortable. I've listened. There have been times 
I've been on the road, or I've been here. One of these pastors are preaching, and conviction fills my heart. I'm watching it on Facebook live, and conviction fills my heart because truth challenges you. Yeah. I don't care who you are, right. how big and bad you are. Yeah. You think God cares about your title? No. Come on. Jesus. <laughs> they call me. You're the pastor. No, you're called to be a Christian. Right. Right. You're right. called to surrender. Yeah. I'm not up here and you're down here. Listen, we've all come by way of the cross. We're on a level yeah. playing field. And we keep preaching these sermons that say, I got it, and y'all need to get it. No, since I'm saying we need to get this thing together. I've got some issues that I want God to fix. And you've got some issues that God needs to fix. Can we be honest with God? Can we tell the truth? Can we stop lying? Can we stop hiding behind your clothes? Stop hiding behind your smile. Stop hiding behind your makeup. Stop hiding behind everything. And be real, Lord. I'm hurting. And if I don't get help, I'm going to die. Come Conviction is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Conviction means I love you. Conviction means I want to help you. The law says I want to destroy you for disobeying me. Grace says come. Come. But Jesus, I've been married five times. I'm living with a man that I'm not even married to. Come. Come on somebody. Come. Grace says, Lord, I, I betrayed you. I denied you three times in front of everyone. But Jesus said, come. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He said, come. Yeah. I mean, no matter what you've done. He says, bring that filth. Bring that junk. Bring your music. Bring your gambling. Bring your lying. Bring your cheating. Bring your adultery. Bring your fornication. Bring it to me. I paid for it at Calvary and I can set you free. Yeah. You gotta believe that. You gotta believe it. Yeah. The sin of Israel was unbelief. The sin of us today is unbelief. Are you comfortable there? Are you comfortable? Here's the thing. The world is a complete lie. Amen. Everything the world offers is a lie. Yeah. Amen. But don't forget there's pleasure mm -hmm. to sing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going back because this feels good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because it feels good. I'm listening to this because it feels good. I'm going here because it feels good. And listen, here's where most of us all get messed up. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. All right, come on. <laughs> come on. It wasn't that bad. I mean, I didn't say it much. It was only a small lie. Ask Israel about Ai. Ask them about the valley of Achor. Ask Israel, can a small thing destroy you? It destroyed them because it was small and it caused them to sin. Even though it was small, small things have a tendency to get bigger. Small lies have a tendency to turn into bigger lies. My mom used to always say, if you lie, you'll cheat. And if you cheat, you'll steal. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because if you start to cover yourself, you got to go back to the Garden of Eden. That was the sin of man. God I'm going to cover myself. And when you cover yourself, you are left on your own protection. And you don't have the protection of God. You're saying, God, I got this. But God is saying, no, I provided the ram in the thicket. I provided the man. The God from Ohio. The root that was plucked out of dry ground. I provided the sacrifice. I provided the lamb. I provided the blood. I provided the power. I provided the Holy Ghost. I provided Jesus rising from the dead. Y'all, I'm going to pick on my kids.
kids, you know, in the wintertime it gets cold. Y'all know when you have to wake up in the morning, you don't want to get up. They said, Mom, Dad, I don't want to get up. Tomorrow's the worst one. She said, it's cold. But she's got all her covers. She said, I'm comfortable here. You go in the bars where you turn the light on, and guess what? It brings discomfort. Yeah. I was comfortable in darkness. Y'all didn't get me. Yeah. I was comfortable here. But then the light comes on yeah. and begins to shine. And guess what happens? I, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Now the Holy Ghost has turned on the yeah. light. He said, I see this. Right. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Yeah. And I pray that I'm uncomfortable with everything that comes that's not like God. I pray that you're uncomfortable with every text message, with every video. I pray that you're uncomfortable with every song you listen to that's not like God. I pray that God, in my God, wraps up your crown, shakes up the bottom, and you begin to shake because you don't know what's going on. Relax. It's me. I'm healing you. Relax. It's me. I'm saving you. I'm changing you. I'm bringing redemption to you. You're comfortable under the cover. Comfortable in darkness. Covers are being removed. You're exposed to the light. Doesn't feel good. I don't even know why I'm the one preaching this. I feel like Paul. I'm more messed up than all of you. He said, I'm the chief sinner. That's what Paul said. But I believe God loves us. Yeah. And I believe Hallelujah. he wants to help us. Amen. I can remember getting corrected as a kid. Getting mad. That's right. Getting angry. But I can remember her coming in the room. I said, babe, I love you. She would hold us. She said, you know, I love you, right? It doesn't feel good when it happens. Yeah. But tell me I'm wrong. Mm. Tell me. I'll, I'll pass the mic. Any child, mm. any adult. Yeah. There's nothing that feels better right. when your mom or dad comforts you after correction. Man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Right. It feels better than the punishment. Yeah. It feel, you, you still remember, but this feels so good. Because I know he loves me. I know she loves me. I know she's there. I know she's got my back. I know no matter what happens to me. Because see, this is what happens. We go around, think about it naturally speaking. We talk and we do this. I'm with my friends. I'm mad at my mama. I'm mad at my daddy. Or I'm mad at my coworker. I'm mad at my husband. I'm mad at my wife. And I'm going to tell anybody who will listen how I really feel about them. But who will have your back when the thick somebody. Mama won't turn away from you. You better remember what you got. And God, this is the one you'll walk away from when things get hard. But who do you run to? As they say earlier, it's the name that I know. It's the name that I love. He's a strong tower. And the righteous run to it and are safe. Shout in here if you know what I'm talking about. Lord, help me not to be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. In my sin. Yeah. Well, brother, what if I fail tomorrow? Get up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One thing about bondages, it's easy to get into. It's not a light switch. And it's not because of Calvary. It's because of us. Yeah. Right. And our imperfection. Yeah. Right. Right. I know we want to leave here today. Oh, man, no more trouble. You got to think about it. When Jacob wrestled with God, his trouble weren't over. Wow, that's right. right. He limped, but Jacob was still in there. Yeah. Yeah. But if we can get on the path, if we can begin to acknowledge some things, if we can begin to really try to yield some things to the Lord and allow the Lord to begin to deal with us, we'll begin to see change. Praying and asking God for a sermon. Praying and asking God for the direction of the church. It don't feel good when God interrupts you. Amen. Yeah. 
You want a sermon to preach, but I want you to live the sermon. That's it. Yeah. That's it. My, my. Yeah. You want direction for the ministry, but I want to give you direction for your life before you ruin yourself. Yeah. Because there's life after the sermon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. After praise and worship, y'all yeah. sing and beautiful job today. We offering, we lay hands on people. I'm up here preaching a sermon. Some, some, she'll be preaching, he'll be preaching, he'll, she will, she will, others will be preaching. But after you finish, you've got to walk out of these doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. Right on. Now, what do I do now? Uh -oh. I can't hide behind this. Uh -oh. Come on, that's it. I pray to God that we don't get comfortable in sin. And as I close this message, think about the story for just a few moments as we close. He was asked to marry this woman just a moment. He was asked to marry this woman. And she left him. She left him to go live a life yeah. of adultery. And all of a sudden, God says, Hosea, I want to read it. I think it's vital that we hear it this morning. <laughs> the Lord said unto Hosea, Go yet, love a woman. Love her, beloved of her friend, but she's still an adulteress. Yeah, love her. Yeah, but she's still out here living. Love her. Yeah. According to the love, this is what you need to get of the Lord towards the children of Israel. I want you to love her, and then think about how imperfect Hosea's love was. Because he was a flawed man. How much more God loves us yeah. despite what you've done, Amen. despite what you went through. Amen. One thing you got to come to conclusion of this morning, Lord, is my fault. Yeah. It's not denying that you were hurt. Don't get me wrong. It's not denying the reality. But sin can never be blamed on anyone. Because there is always an outlet. Right, right, right. right. You hear me? We can never blame God. We can never. Well, that this it is never God's fault or anybody else's because God has provided. We got to make sure we preach that. People say y'all preaching greed, secret. No, we're not. God has provided a way out of sin that you don't have to fail. Right, 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 you don't right, have, right. We don't believe that. We're not preaching that. You don't have to sin. He's provided everything right, right. that you need. You don't have to fail. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you can't blame anyone for your sin. You got to come to terms with sin. I, I want you to hear that this morning. You got to come to terms with sin and say, Lord, it's me. It's my fault. I blew it. I've been living in the world. I've been doing everything I thought I was big and bad enough to do. I do what I want, talk to who I want, listen to what I want, go where I want, do what I want. And the whole time we forget your body is not your own. You've been purchased. That's if you are a Christian. If you are a Christian, then you belong to the Lord. That's right. I'm preaching to believers this morning yeah. and the unbeliever to say, if you're not saved this morning, you can say, Lord, yeah. I want to come home Amen. to Jesus Christ. Right. Everybody who was with Gomer has now left her. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? People who you thought had your back. Yeah. Uh -oh. 
The people who I smoked with and drank with and gambled with and did all of this stuff, when I got saved, a lot of them turned away. They didn't want to have anything to do with me. And then now that you are saved, when you let me show you something. When you make a stand as a Christian, let me help you. Are you afraid to lose friends? Are you afraid to stand alone? Because your stance will bring frustration to come people on, who don't on. want to do what you're right, saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a poor choice of words, but they're not, they're not going to feel too good right. about you standing for what's right because you're making them uncomfortable. You right. just turn right. the light on. Don't do anything for convenience. Girl, I'm just going to let her call me because I'm tired of hearing his mouth. No! If I've got to be single, come on, if I've got to be the only one on my campus, come on somebody, that is single. I will be single and in love with God before I try, listen, try to love a man that's not worth my time. Because if you're unequally yoked, it won't work. It can't work. evangelize them in and then try to marry them. No. God said I have provided something, someone for you. I know she's cute, man. But she ain't yours. Come on, preacher. There you go. I know she's sweet, but she's not yours. There you go. I know she is. But she's still not yours. Amen. Oh, you better. And if you start living your life out of convenience, mm -hmm. you will make decisions that will destroy you mm -hmm. just to please other people. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Everybody's patting me on the back, telling me how fine my man is, but he's hoeing around everywhere. Forgive me, I just got to tell it like it is. He's beating on you. He's dogging you. He doesn't respect you. He spits in your face, and you're just holding on to what everybody else is saying. I can't leave him because it's convenient. Girl, you better wake up, boy. You better wake up and leave the fool and say, God, I'm coming home to you. I've got to come home. I've got to come home. I know I'm not going to get a lot of folks shouting, but you got to tell the truth. Have I become your enemy? Are you mad because I'm wrong? Or are you mad because you're convicted? Come on now. That's what you got to remember when it comes to the Bible. Am I getting mad right now because I'm convicted or because he's just wrong? I'm not trying to be right. So to speak, I'm saying what this says. Because when I leave here, I got to go back in prayer. Yeah. Amen. It's too much messed up. It's too much wrong. It's too much comfort. It's too much just going the wrong way. It's too much. It's too much. God's been let down too long. You're a man. You're a protector. Hear me, man. Hear me, young man. You're going to manhood. You're a protector. You're called to protect. You're called to lead. Amen. Can she follow you? Come on. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Hmm. You won't know because you don't see, because you won't pray, and because you don't read the word. But if you get priorities right, God will bring revival. God will bring restoration. I'm not here this morning to say all hope is gone. I'm here this morning to say today is a new day. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. Yesterday is gone. I can't change what I did. I can't change the sin. But today, I am free. Go get her. Mama. Standing there shamed. 30 pieces of silver is what a slave cost in that time. 30 pieces. Hosea paid 15. Half the price of a slave. That means she was not worth God said, love her. She's standing there on, in the slave market, <clears throat> humiliated. She doesn't know what to do. No doubt her head down. 
Come here, Jim Brown. Y'all don't get jealous. You're the prettiest one in here. <laughs> Just stand there. Now, hope, oh, Gomer didn't look this good, so y'all. <laughs> Close your eyes. Can you imagine? Mm. Nobody else around. Nobody else wants you. Yeah. The people who you thought had you turned their back on you. She was used up. Yeah. Yeah. She thought her riches came from everybody else, but God said they came from me. Oh my God. Gomer standing there, and all of a sudden, Hosea walks up. No indication is given in scripture that he walked up looking at her like this. There she goes. Just looks dirty and filthy. The indication is when he saw her, pleasure was there. What everybody else sees is filth. Yeah. I know they remember your sin. I know they remember what you did. They're talking about your house. They're talking about your children. They're talking about your marriage. They're talking about the mess up. They're talking about everything. But what you need to remember is the one who you need to focus on. Right, right. He never stopped loving you. Yeah. He never stopped caring for you. Everybody else turned away. But he said, I've never stopped looking for you and now I come to get you he sees her with pleasure Goma look up baby. it's me I'm the one you left I'm Jose I'm your husband I know you lived a filthy lifestyle I know you're yet an adulteress but I come to tell you that I love you I come to tell you that no matter what you've done and I didn't just come to get you. I'm coming to take you home. You stay with me for many days. Let the world talk. Let them make fun of you. Let them say, oh, they let him back in the church. Like, yes, because this is the house of sacrifice. This is the house of God. This is a house where sinners can come and be changed. Somebody on the shout this morning. That's what God is telling you this morning. Yeah. Hear me. You can come home. That's right. You can come home. I want to say that. I feel that in my heart. You can come home. My I don't care what you've done. Right. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how long you've done it. Right, right. You can come home. No. You've been unfaithful, but you can come home. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. I don't care how long you've done it. I don't care how many times. I've come to just give you the word that God gave me. You can come home. I love you. And I purchased you. Not with silver and gold. But I purchased you with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to do something that I haven't planned. Forgive me, Zion, but I want you to come here. Maisha, please. Get on that keyboard over there. Zion, come here behind that microphone. You just got to close your eyes, close your eyes. I want everybody in this place to bow your heads. Everyone. This is an altar call. This is an altar call. Just, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Whatever you know, just in a moment's time, she's going to sing that song. I believe this wholeheartedly. This message was for me. This message is for some of us who 
we hear today. I don't want you to look around, figure out who is strayed, who needs to do what, or whatever the case. But this morning, right now, I want you to search your own heart. Search your own heart. It said, Lord, I want to come home. It's like the story Brother Lauren shared of the little girl who was in the daycare. The father came to pick her up, and when he came, the child care provider told her, said, honey, you got to go clean up your mess before you can leave. She was brokenhearted. She began to scream, throw a fit, and tell the father, please, don't leave me. Don't leave me. He looked at his daughter. He said, sweetheart, I didn't come to leave you. I came to pick you up. That's what God is coming to do this morning in this service. He didn't come to leave any of us behind. He came to pick us up. And with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I sit strongly in my heart that there's conviction in this place. God didn't come to throw you away, young man, young lady. Adult, he didn't come to throw you away. He came to heal this morning. He came to set free. He didn't come to bring judgment to destroy. He came to say, I got to bring you home because you're all used up. Nothing left out there. Nothing left. I know you're brokenhearted. You're, 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 what is it? your parents, your, your spouse? I don't care. Job, the job has crushed you. School has crushed you. There's so many things that have broken you, that's hurt you. And, and now you're sitting around wondering, what do I do? The pressure of life, the pressure of family bills, all of this stuff, it's all but destroyed me. But this morning, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm going to ask all of you who are here to stand all over the house of God. I'm going to ask Zion to just begin to sing that song, please. Hallelujah. Hear me as she ministers or whatever the case.